Welcome to the Grampians Peaks Trail. We've only done about a kilometre of it, but it's going to be a 37 kilometre round trip from Hull's Gap to Hull's Gap. And you can see even a kilometre in, the views are spectacular. Can't wait to see what's next. Believe it or not, the Grampians Peaks Trail is actually still under construction. It's going to end up being 144 kilometres and the plan is to make it a 13 day, 12 night track from point to point. In 2014, the government threw a bunch of money behind it, upgrading 65 kilometers of the trail, and the rest of it, they're building from scratch. So we're literally doing the first two days on this track because it's all that's open right now. But the views are supposed to be very good. about two and a half kilometers of walking you come up to Splitters Falls and now it's only a 100 meter detour or 200 meters round trip but it's definitely worth it. Even today it's starting to rain, it's drizzly, it's a bit cold but the extra walk is definitely worth the view. Pinnacle. Now this is supposed to be one of the best views you can possibly get on this particular section of the track. And unfortunately, it seems we've risen so high that we're in a cloud. And the only thing we can see is complete whiteness. Which is cool in itself, I suppose, but I don't think it's quite as good as the views that I've seen in the postcards. Let's take a walk up the ramp anyway. shots but I may as well just photoshop in a, a white background because it's going to be the same. Wow. We walked about 1.1 kilometers from Sundial car park and you see a sign that says Bugiga camp 0.49 kilometers away Heck and yeah. at this point you're actually pretty happy about that. <laughs> Even though it's a 8.6 kilometer day, it's pretty uphill and maybe we packed a few too many chocolates in our bags or something because they're pretty heavy. beautiful spot. The platforms are an awesome idea but I do not love the rope system. It ended up being fairly easy but it's kind of hard to get your angles. Let me show you what I mean. 
This cable runs around the circumference of the platform, allowing you to pull tension on your tent using extra ropes or carabiners. We've been able to use a combination of the tent's own guy lines and extra rope that we've brought along. And although it's not a huge deal and definitely not the end of the world, if you don't have a freestanding tent, it can prove a little tricky not being able to use pegs. Most smaller tents won't actually give you enough length and guy lines to be able to place them in the center of the platform, just because of the distance between the center of the platform and the cable that runs around it. Although there are plenty of rocks to tie onto, most aren't heavy enough to keep proper tension on the frame of our tent, so we've ended up using extra rope on almost all of the peg points. To be completely fair, that actually is a pretty great system, and maybe I'm just bitching a little bit too much at the end of a hard day. It works, it didn't take too much effort, and I think uh, the government is doing a really good job of like putting ease of great facilities out into a bushwalks to make it more accessible to more people. So it's a thumbs up from me, and it's a thumbs up from Beck too. It really didn't take too long. Do make sure you bring rope with you though. Day two is off to a very misty start. We woke up okay, but the clouds soon set in and now we've got literally that exact same fog that we saw at the pinnacle yesterday. And it's set in pretty strong and it's getting stronger and stronger. So although we woke up really looking forward to the views we're gonna get from uh, Mount Rosea, I honestly don't know how to pronounce it. We've just read it and we're hoping it says Mount Rosea or Rosia, whatever it's called. We were um, really looking forward to the views from there, but I don't think we're gonna see them. So this whole episode might not be any good. It might just be a bunch of clouds and that's it. Today's walk is 13.8 kilometers from Bugiga camp. Again, not sure of the pronunciation of that one, to Barra Huts. The camp we've just come from is a hikers only camp. So it was quite secluded. There was only one other couple there last night. And the camp we're going to now is more of a drive-in campground that people can drive their cars through, set up proper tents. So we're gonna be expecting a bit more of a crowd tonight. And it may not feel quite as adventurous to get there because it's more of a commercial spot, I suppose. Hopefully we get better views from the mountain today. The maps you read suggest that you get big 360 panoramic views of the whole area and the whole ranges around the area. But I have a feeling today we're gonna to get big 360 panoramic views of cloud. <laughs> Hope for the best.
actually a fairly difficult climb. I wasn't expecting it to be quite so hard or challenging. After all the mist, after being rained on, after getting wet, cold, we've almost reached the summit of Mount Rosea. And you wouldn't believe it, but all the clouds have disappeared and it's actually cleared up. So we get summit views. Thank God for that. <laughs> Might actually be able to show you something. Don't let go of my bleeding soul. Wow. This is the summit. Summit. No clouds, no mist, no rain, no wind. Woo! Kind of a compass, <laughs> old style compass, pointing to all the nearby landmarks. With the how far away they are. It's really cool. Look how green this little lake is. Come on, come on, come on. glad that the um, clouds actually cleared up for us because I'm gonna, not gonna lie to you, it wasn't exactly fun climbing up this mountain when there was huge amounts of mist everywhere. It was kind of a little bit breezy, it was cold. The trip didn't get off to a great start with the coolant from my car leaking out everywhere and that's been in the back of my head the entire time. But when you do finally push through, and this is the highest point we're gonna reach for the, for the trek too, so we know it's all downhill from here. It's really beautiful. I mean, the sun's come up over the hills over there and Beck and I are now just enjoying like a really nice little quiet moment to ourselves. No one else is around. And it's dry and the wind has dropped and there's no clouds around and it's really beautiful. It really is. Unfortunately, the lens is completely fogged over because of so much warm breath in this tent. It's very cold outside. This is a good night from me on day two and good night from Beck on day two. Good night. Let it in. 
starting day three, leaving Burra Huts campground, and Beck and I have realised there's no huts at Burra Huts, unless you include the toilets, which are kind of hut-like. Oh yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. From the maps, it seems like day three might be a bit of a nothing day. I don't know. It seems like it's not going to be spectacular views. It's not going to be incredible mountainous climbs. They kind of just describe it like, and here's how you get back to Hall's Gap. But it's certainly not very descriptive like day two and day one have been. I think when the Grampian Peaks Trail reaches its 144 kilometer length from point to point, this day three return that we're doing today, it won't actually be a part of the track. So I think this is just how to get you back for the three day thing they've got going on right now. But we'll see what's ahead. Maybe there's gonna be spectacular mountain views. We're not sure. And we're back into the forest. But it's pretty nice. Oh, obstacles. Oh my God. Whoa. And we've reached the car park. 37 kilometers, three days, two nights, round loop from Hull's Gap to Hull's Gap. And we're back at the base. <laughs> Standard high five after a hike. Now let's hope the coolant hasn't leaked completely out of the car. Thank <laughs> you. 